welcome to another episode of Thunder Insider. I'm your host, Chris Fisher. We begin the show on a two-game West Coast swing. The team got the victory against the Lakers and got to witness NBA history in the process. There's a one-legged fadeaway from 15. There it is. There it is. He's done it. All-Star Weekend has come and gone, and we have an all-access pass to the action-packed weekend in Salt Lake City. Hey, love to get it. Love is in the air. The players gave out gifts and joined in on some arts and crafts for Valentine's Day at the Lionwood Independent Living Center. Let's kick off the show with the latest edition of Onward. This is the second of four meetings between Dagnalt's Thunder and Steve Kerr's Warriors. As OKC begins a three-game swing, the opening night of a back-to-back -back sequence in L.A. tomorrow night to challenge LeBron and the Lakers and taking on Portland on Friday. The start was exactly what we needed on the road. Uh, I thought we controlled much of the first quarter. Really good attacks. Um, you know, pretty good D. They had to make a lot of tough jump shots, uh, but we didn't give them much easy in that first quarter. And then, uh, you know, credit them. They were really persistent uh, with their pace. They are who they are, and they have an identity, and they play that way. Um, and I think that's why they've been good for a long time. Um, now, obviously, they're, they're beatable, they're humans, um, but you got to play a, a, a full basketball game, and I don't think we did so tonight. Downtown, he drains the three. And we'll focus on tomorrow. Tomorrow, obviously, we were, you know, this is a obviously a opponent that deserves all of our attention. Um, you know, so at the end of the day, you know, we're a growing team. And, you know, the bigger the games are and the bigger the circumstances are, the more you have to limit distractions and keep your head down. And tomorrow will be a great test of that for our group. Looking forward to seeing how we respond. Thunder in Los Angeles tonight, second night of a back-to-back, -back, taking on the Lakers, a wild circus atmosphere. Could be a night where history is made. LeBron James is 36 points away from surpassing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as the all-time leading scorer in NBA history. Obviously, there's a lot of buzz kind of surrounding this game, so it's good for us to kind of get this experience. And yeah. I don't think there's really going to be another environment like this, so it's cool that we're a young team that gets to kind of go through this process. I just wanted to make sure that the team stayed focused um, on the task at hand. Um, obviously, it's unusual in a basketball game. Um, and obviously, you can get distracted, you can get stiff, you can get whatever it is. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that we were ready to go um, and ready to take advantage of the situation. Here is Joe, and Joe sticks the landing on a three. He's seeing LeBron high post right, crowded by Kenrich. Holds on his left hip, eight to shoot. Grinding into the lane, elevates and fires a one-legged fade away from 15. There it is! There it is! He's done it! King James' ascent is complete. He's now seated on the throne as the NBA's all-time scoring king with that bucket surpassing the legendary Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with 38,388 career points. Everything that happened tonight, our team acted like we expected to, it to happen. You know, that's the best way I could put it. I thought the, um, you know, just the collective focus and the collective poise was was there. And I thought that was contagious tonight, the focus and the poise among the group. I, I was really encouraged. Once we huddled after the, the speeches, um, the internal dialogue of the team was really cool. You know, like they were saying all the right things to each other. It wasn't, didn't have to come from me. And that's when you know you're, you're kind of humming. This is a tough three game road trip for the Thunder here along the Pacific Coast. It continues and concludes here in Portland tonight as OKC coming off that great win in LA a couple days off now and they take on the Trailblazers and this is a division rivalry, one that the Thunder has done very well in recently, but as we always say, these new matchups all present different challenges. What we were saying internally is just that we were gonna have to get stops if we wanted to get the game. You know, otherwise it was going to be, you know, a scoring fest, first to 140 type thing. And, um, you know, it took us a while to get there, but once we got it going, we got into a nice defensive rhythm. Uh, we were really active, really helping each other, really engaged. Uh, we executed both ends of the floor. We caused a lot of turnovers. Uh, Lou did a great job on Dean, um, especially in that fourth. Made him take tough shots, um, forced him to turn the ball over. So our defense was really good after that seven-point stretch they had. Uh, we were locked in and ready to go. Um, our offense took care of itself. Oh. 
Isaiah Jones, a little sidestep three, and he drains another one. He put we, we, were, we were helping each other defensively. Um, we were in the load. We were in the next pass. Um, Dave had it going all night, and we just tried to make a play, make him pass, and uh, make the play after that. Happy to be here, you know. Uh, happy to be part of this organization, part of this like a uh, uh, group of young, talented guys who have like a lot of years in front of them to play basketball. So be there and play with them and be in the sport is like really amazing for me and uh, happy to be here. The Thunder's coming off the road, that long West Coast swing. Got some practice time in here before beginning this two-game homestand that leads into the All-Star break. Usually down 20, a lot of teams kind of give up, and that's when you dig yourself a bigger hole. Uh, unfortunately, we've been there a lot this year, um, but we've also learned how to kind of play through that, and that's something we're getting better at. Obviously, you don't want to continue to be down 20, but um, we just never stop playing, so that's, that's good on our end. And, um, I think it's good once you come back from round 20, you get it to round three, and you still have a lot of time left. You know, that kind of energizes us even more. Um, on behalf of myself, Shay, uh, J-Dub, we just want to uh, give you guys a big thanks for voting us through to the All-Star Weekend in Utah. Uh, we're extremely humbled and honored to represent you guys in the city, so thank you very much. really was was impressed by our focus level that's a tough game because of the all-star break and it's a tough game because um, we won by a good margin the last time we played them and so uh, a lot of dynamics that we had to overcome mentally and I thought our guys really brought it from the jump and played 48 minutes of good basketball I think it's easy to look at the score and the way the game ended and, and take the win for granted. We never take it for granted, especially uh, an opportunity to kind of sharpen our blade mentally. You know, like managing distractions, staying in the moment of the season. You know, those are skills that are critically important, you know, especially as we're forming our habits. And so um, tonight challenged us on that, and I thought we did a great job of that. I was really, really you know, impressed with the guys. Because all my guys, we all best friends on this team. So when once one person succeeds, we all succeed. All right, congrats on the win. Enjoy the break, Jay Will. Yep, thank you. After the break, we check in with Josh, J Dub, and Shay at All Star Weekend. When you have this metabolism, you can keep eating. Framed by the Wasatch Mountains, here we are in Salt Lake City, the host of All-Star 2023, a city that's ready to rock. Vivid Arena, where it's all going to happen. Uh, super cool. Um, I'm ecstatic. I'm a little tired from the flight in, but um, yeah, it's been cool. I'm here with my teammates as well, so it's a really cool moment. Um, obviously special any chance you have to be a part of All-Star Weekend. Uh, you know, as a kid, you grow up watching these type of events. So uh, to be here for the second year, um, very special. Um, it's humbling and very grateful to represent my city. everybody this is going to be kind of the first time that like all the rookies have really played against each other and you know even the sophomores since like you know pre-draft so i'm um, kind of just looking forward to playing against everybody and and being able to kind of share this experience with them um you know being a dog representing the team in the rising star game um is also you know a great accomplishment so we're very happy it's, it's exciting that okc is well represented here this weekend um and then hopefully you know this is you know, this is just the beginning. Hopefully, for years to come, we've got guys coming to this, you know, this weekend, and um, you know, it's definitely exciting for us.
presents, welcome to Jordan Rising Stars. It's an explosive shooter and one of the top rookie scorers this season for the Oklahoma City Thunder, Jalen Williams. It's a crafty ball handler from the Oklahoma City Thunder. Please welcome Josh Giddey. All right. to get it. It's awesome. Um, I mean, that's why it makes it so fun. You get to play with, you know, guys in the same age as you. Um, you kind of get to be a vet, you know, when you're a sophomore. Um, so it's a lot of fun out there. Um, you know, guys you see all around the league, you don't really have anything to do with them. And then you come together on All-Star Weekend and uh, get to form relationships that maybe you never got to form if it wasn't for this event. So uh, a lot of fun. And I formed, you know, lifelong friendships from last year and I will from this year. Oh, it was really cool. I haven't played against a lot of them since, like, pre-draft or, you know, stuff like that. So it was really cool to kind of be out here. And, uh, you know, like, you don't really expect to bond with them as, the, you know, going through this whole thing. So it was cool that, you know, you kind of get to build those relationships and just be out there and compete and have fun. It's probably the only time of the year that, you know, you'll be able to just have fun and be okay with losing today. So it, it was fun to be out there. You know, I knew he was coming out tonight. Uh, and it was awesome to see, you know, guys supporting us, uh, especially, you know, when you got an all-star on your team, uh, to make the time to come out, watch me and Dell play in these type of games. Uh, you know, me Means a, you know, means a lot more than what he would probably know. Oh, it's special. It's really cool. It just kind of shows the bond that we all have. It is All-Star Game debut for the Oklahoma City Thunder, Shay Gilsis Alexander. It's been fun so far. Um, soaking up the whole weekend, all the experiences. Um, here with friends and family, it's been it's been really fun. It feels good. Um, I think having three guys here is, is pretty good for our future. Um, it means we're heading in the right direction, on the right track. Um, as long as we continue to get better, we'll be good. But um, I'm happy for those guys, and I'm happy for the team for sure. Joined by potentially best drift out here today. Good job, girls. Josh Giddy. How are you feeling, man? It's great. Uh, it's a great event. Um, it's the first time in a long time I've been on the snow, so it's exciting to see so many talented snowboarders out here today, and we're having a great time. star fourth player from Canada to be an all-star 
33 games of at least 30 points. And look, he's played 53 games. He's been the Thunder's leading scorer in 47 of those. My, my third B gonna be Shay. Shay kills his salad. SGA. Congrats. Shea Gilgis-Alexander gives him an answer. And you talk about somebody that just makes it easy. Shea Gilgis-Alexander has been on a tear. I'm just honored to be here. Um, play with the best players in the world. Um, I get to showcase my skills on the stage. Kind of went how I expected. It was busy. Um, tried to soak it up as much as possible. Um, try to spend as much time with, with my loved ones as possible. It was cool. How are we doing, guys? My face red? Blushing, blushing. We are making a gnome, I believe. Uh, a lot of fun uh, getting to be... I haven't done arts and crafts in a long time, so this is uh, new for me. But a lot of fun being here. It's one of the best things about what we get to do as a professional athlete is engage with fans, and especially fans like this who sometimes aren't able to get out as much. And having players come in to see them can make their day. So any chance we get to engage with the community, we take it. So you're king, Walt Vandermark. In the middle of the gnome making, uh, I was called upon to present our king and queen, uh, two lovely people sitting beside me. Uh, I was just trying to have fun, have a good time. I have no idea how I ended up being a master of ceremony, but they all reacted. They were super excited, so it was fun. He was so excited. I mean, he, he acted like he'd been doing this forever, and we're so excited for the king and queen, too. They're some wonderful people. I love it because they come to hang out with some old people. That's, that's just heavenly. I mean, you guys just do a wonderful job, and you let the community know that you, you are a part of the community, and I love that. Isaiah Joe and Usman Jang hosted the Dreamcatchers at the Blue Ion in Edmond. We hosted an all-girls basketball competitive club from Oatmogee, Oklahoma. They're called the Oklahoma Dreamcatchers, and some of their facilities in rural Oklahoma were made possible by tribal resources. So practices are made available, tournaments are made available, and they were able to go ahead and get some opportunities on the court that we hope inspire empowerment, confidence, etc., off the court as well. It was fun engaging with them. They had a really good time. I enjoyed myself. These group of girls, they work hard. They're enthusiastic about it. And I think that's something that a lot of kids need when playing this sport. You have fun. When you're having fun, you work harder, you play better. It was amazing to see. I mean, the Oklahoma City Thunder, you know, they asked, we're going to show up. So, I mean, that's just an amazing feeling to even get that opportunity. We got girls from Milwaukee, Tahlequah, Sepulpa, Glenpool. The confidence-wise, they're, they're excited. It's built so much confidence, they're ready to go play. They're up here shooting shots against them right now. You can see the smile on their faces. They all got their shirt signed, and that's just an incredible feeling for them. And I said, now you can look on TV, and you'll see them on TV playing. I think it's huge for younger girls to see myself in this position and many other women coaches and see what they can aspire to be. Just for them to be here and have the opportunity to see NBA players, coaches like myself, and women within a professional sporting organization is huge for them. After the break, OG and E and the Thunder have been partnering all season long to highlight first responders in our community. Today, we honor Chief Andy Logan. There are a lot of exciting things happening at Paycom Center. Join us as we celebrate Thunder Hispanic Heritage Night at Noches and Abea on March 5th. Our very own Paris Lawson and Dr. Vanessa Brooks will be featured at the Women in Business Summit on March 14th. Go to OKCThunder.com for tickets and programming information. We're so excited to be here today in Piedmont to celebrate our OG&E safety partner, Chief Andy Logan of the Piedmont Fire Department. 
to recognize uh, Fire Chief Andy Logan for his outstanding contribution to the citizens and the residents of uh, Piedmont, Oklahoma. It means a lot that the recognition that he's receiving today uh, and the generous donation that was made as well, we're extremely grateful for. And I know that uh, the fire department really appreciates being noticed. He is the epitome of an exemplary employee at Piedmont and I couldn't be happier for him. He's just a fantastic guy and he deserves this. We're excited today to present a $1,500 check to the Piedmont Fire Department on behalf of Chief Andy Logan for being such a great community leader, safety leader, and a team member. His leadership and just a service to the community. Chief. Yeah, this is an awesome opportunity. Uh, we can't say thank you enough to OG&E &E and the Oklahoma City Thunder for recognizing our department. I know that uh, sometimes it, it, it says my name on the award, but it is 100% a team effort. Uh, any recognition that I receive is a reflection on a great team that I work with.